I want to want to go uh, through one more major misrepresentation um, by the UK Royal Society, claiming that the the claims that have come out about problems were not about the GM method itself, but about the specific gene introduced into the crop, or about agricultural practices associated with the crop, such as herbicide treatments. Actually, that's false. And uh, there have been a few studies that have, uh, have, have clearly uh, concluded that there was something about the process itself. In fact, the, the Royal Society is well aware of the main study because it was in the forefront of attacking it quite unjustly. And uh, it, its attack, it tried to prevent that study from getting published. It was eventually published in the Lancet, a premier journal in 1999, but even since it's been published, it continues to attack the study and misrepresent it. Its attacks, by the way, were so unjust that the editors of the Lancet rebuked the Royal Society for uh, for its uh, breathtaking impertinence and its reckless disregard of the principle of due process. <laughs> but that hasn't stopped the Royal Society. So they're claiming no study uh, had shown that there was a problem with the uh, process itself. Actually, that very study did. Because of the way it was controlled, the researchers concluded in their published article that the main problems that were detected in the rats were, were likely due to the process of genetic engineering itself. Oh. Now, the extent, of the, the extent of the misrepresentations that have been propagated about GMOs by the scientific community are well summed up, I think, in this statement by Michael Antono uh, he's a molecular geneticist with King's College London School of Medicine. If the co and he has studied the research thoroughly. He's written about it. He's written a book about it, co-authored a book. If the kind of detrimental effects seen in animals fed GE food were observed in a clinical setting, the product's use would be halted and further research instigated to determine the cause and to find solutions. However, what repeatedly happens in the case of GE food is that despite increasing evidence of serious adverse health effects, health, adverse health test results, government and industry continue unabated with the development, endorsement, and marketing of these foods as if nothing has happened, to the point they even seem to ignore the results of their own research. Now, I just want to move on and, and give you, a, initially at the beginning of this talk, I mentioned that, that biological facts have been misrepresented as well to make nature look worse so that GM foods would look better. And here's, here's a, one of the key examples. This comes from a report uh, issued by our Na the U.S. National Academy of Sciences in 2004, trying to, now it, they had to concede that genetic engineering can produce novel toxins that have never before been in the species, the target species. But then they claim, well, conventional breeding can do the same thing. Uh, so, and they, but they couldn't cite any good example. Here's their example. Uh, here are technical names. Basically, it was a wild variety of potato was crossed with a domestic variety, and they claimed that not only was the usual, were the usual glycoalkaloids produced, but also the toxin demisidine, which they say is not produced in either parent. Then they stated, this singular result shows that non-genetic engineering breeding methods can have unintended effects and generate potentially hazardous new products. That's baloney. Okay, now, do anybody here grow potatoes or know about potatoes? Demisidine is is synthesized within all potatoes, almost all potatoes, as they grow. That's one of the reasons that you're warned against eating unripe potatoes. The, the thing is that by the, when the potato, potato has become fully ripened and is ready to eat, then the level of demisidine is pretty much nil. So it's false to state, as they claimed, and they claimed a few times, that 
This, this toxin was novel to the parents, had not been in either parent before. It had been in the parents as they were growing. So it's just false. It's flat out false. Whereas we do know that there have been completely unique novel toxins produced through genetic engineering. That is clear. And the National Academy of Science in that report went on to compound the, uh, the deception by stating that the risk of the production of novel toxins is present any time traditional breeding is used. They're claiming that any time pollen-based breeding is used, there is a risk of unintended novel toxins. But that's false, F clearly false. In fact, a, uh, a paper that was published in Plant Physiology in 2013 by eight experts stated, although breeders recombine tens of thousands of genes with virtually infinite potential interactions, to our knowledge, there has never been a report of a completely novel toxin or allergen appearing in a genus as a result of conventional breeding. Then they went on to state uh, that they concluded that therefore the likelihood that any will occur through conventional methods, quote, is virtually zero. <laughs> Quite a contrast with that, with that statement, bold assertion by the National Academy of Science and much more in line with the evidence. Now, the, so the, the aggregate fraud, the aggregate fraud, as my book demonstrates, the aggregate fraud that's been propagated, per perpetrated by scientists and scientific institutions, if you, if you put together all the various deceptions, misrepresentations, suppressions, it really stands as the biggest fraud in the history of science. And, and a fairly small proportion of scientists have been misleading the public and the rest of the scientific community. Most scientists are not involved. Many scientists will tell you they think GMOs are safe, but it's based on what they've heard people or institutions they respect say, and they, and they have a right to trust them, but their trust, unfortunately, was misplaced. Here's a very telling quote from David Schubert, that professor at the Salk Institute, a molecular biologist who does understand the facts. I have spoken with many molecular and even plant biologists who are not directly involved in producing genetically engineered foods. And it's clear that most have been misled about the basic facts. For instance, they assume these foods have undergone rigorous safety testing, as in the case of drugs, and are surprised to learn that they haven't. Nor are they aware that the insertions of the recombinant cassettes are not precise, but random. Instead, due to the disinformation dispensed by the life scientists who practice and promote agricultural bio bioengineering, they have the impression that there are no unusual risks and that everything is under control. In most cases, after I've explained the key facts, they change their position. Now, Dr. Schubert has gone on to state, some plant biologists are making statements about GE foods that they almost certainly know are not true. And that, that's a fair statement. That is a, in fact, it's about the only state, it, its truth has to be concluded when one has read all of the evidence, all of the deceptions. Probably you've heard enough already to uh, see why that statement is true.